all NATO allies uh, contribute to the US-led efforts to uh, degrade and destroy uh, ISIL. And just last week we started training of uh, Iraqi officers and uh, we will continue to support the efforts of the United States and other countries to uh, fight uh, uh, ISIL. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg, during a meeting with President Obama yesterday discussing the fight against ISIS, he explained the next steps NATO, NATO plans to take to fight the terror group. But there is more trouble brewing here at home for the Obama administration over cooked intelligence concerning ISIS. A report in the Daily Beast cites two officials at CINCOM who say they were forced out of their jobs for reporting skeptical information regarding ISIS and not towing the administration narrative concerning victories over ISIS. That's why we're going to call on our next panel. And I am very pleased to point out that right here on the anchor desk is my good friend and former colleague on Capitol Hill, likewise the former chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Pete Hoekster. Pete, good to have you here in studio hey, tonight. Good to be here. Thank you. And at Newsmax Washington, two other gentlemen who we want to hear from. First, yet another congressional colleague, Michael Patrick Flanagan, the gentleman from Illinois. And also at Newsmax Washington, retired U.S. Army Colonel Patrick Murray, who served in Iraq, in Russia, and at the United Nations. He also, once upon a time, was a candidate for Congress in the great Commonwealth of Virginia. It's good to have you all here tonight on our special election coverage as we await the closing of the polls in Madison, Wisconsin. Pete, first to you on this whole question. Just sacrificing honest intelligence to toe the political line, is that the bottom line with this administration? Uh, I think everything that we've seen over the last seven years, that's exactly what's happened. We've, you know, this is what, the third or fourth time that this has been reported. Uh, some of the statements that this administration has made about, you know, ISIS is the JV team and these types of things. Uh, what happened in Benghazi, the narrative of, uh, you know, it's all about the video. It's, it's one thing after another. They're pushing this narrative that says we are winning and we are not. Mike Flanagan, uh, you win in terms of uh, telling us about this, tipping us off. You were hearing talk of this, what, three or four months ago, and now, sadly, it has been confirmed. So uh, what? I guess you can say, I told you so. Well, you, you've done the impossible, J.D. You've proved me right. Um, <laughs> my, our, our dear friend Peter Hoekster is absolutely correct. Um, it's, it's worse than just shaping the intelligence so that we can create a good narrative. They have cleared real warriors out of the Pentagon and replaced them with careerists and bureaucrats and people who value the next star rather than getting the information correct. Uh, it's, it's a crime, it's sad, and it's going to take decades to unravel the harm that this, the Chicago guys have done to the Pentagon. I mean, look at DOL. They report under 5% unemployment. That's a hyperactive economy. That's, that's an economy on overload that's beyond full employment. And you, but you look at the, the Federal Reserve numbers and it's closer to 8 or 9% unemployment. They, they have no problem fixing the numbers. They have no problem shaping the, the view, even if it's a lie. And we have to be skeptical of anything that comes out of this, this administration. And the Pentagon is now subject to that, that caveat as well. Yeah, Mike, it's sad to see the Pentagon uh, go the way of Chicago Cook County. Yeah. You have some experience there. Colonel Murray. Some other news out of the Middle East, our Navy seizing an Iranian ship apparently headed to Yemen, just chocked full of weapons. 1,500 Kalashnikov assault rifles, 200 rocket-propelled grenade launchers, 2150 caliber machine guns. The State Department did say yesterday that the U.S. will not allow Iran to have access to our financial system. But is that really going to happen in wake of that nuclear agreement the president was so insistent upon? Well, good evening, J.D. This should surprise no one. Iran has told us from the beginning they're not going to slow down their, their fact that they're a state sponsor of terrorism. We just happen to catch them red-handed with all these weapons. But they continue to do ballistic missile tests, which is in violation of United Nations Security Council agreements. And they're also now whining that they're not getting all their goodies that Barack Obama promised them in the in the iran nuclear deal so they could very well walk away from this as soon as they feel like that um, that they're satisfied the fact is that european countries 
they're already in Tehran. They're already doing deals with the Iranians. So, so this train has long since left the station. The consequences of leading from behind. Gentlemen, uh, since we are awaiting some political results, uh, the primary results in Wisconsin, let's combine, Pete, politics and foreign policy. Now, we should point out that you are in support of our old congressional colleague, now Ohio Governor John Kasich. Uh, I think we would all readily agree that no matter who the Republican nominee is, it would be a marked improvement from what we're seeing from the current president. But with the minute that remains, why are you still in John Kasich's corner? Well, I think John is the most prepared to be the next president. John also is the only one of the three remaining candidates that consistently beats Hillary Clinton in a one-on-one -on -one matchup this fall. I'm, I'm interested in making sure that in January, we have got a Republican president in the White House who can turn around this foreign policy and keep America safe. John can do that. Uh, Michael Patrick Flanagan, since uh, you uh, did what people thought was impossible, win a congressional seat as a Republican in Chicago, are you uh, of the opinion that Donald Trump can pull a surprise? 20 seconds. I think Donald Trump can win tonight. And the ARG poll, while a little bit of an outlier, certainly in its numbers, it tried to do something that the other polls haven't, and that's capture a lot of Trump's vote, which is a non-traditional Republican vote. Yep, that open primary opens up a whole lot of areas of discussion. Gentlemen, stay right where you are. We'll get the good colonel back in on this discussion. And we want you to stay too, as after the break, we will continue to talk about the implications of national security, border security, foreign policy, and what may happen tonight in the Badger State. It's Newsmax TV's coverage of America Votes 2016, the Wisconsin primary, and we will continue right after this. You're watching Newsmax TV's coverage of America Votes 2016, the Wisconsin primary, polls in the Badger State set to close in about 15 minutes. Now, you see right there on the bottom of your screen something you're want to, going to want to keep an eye on, especially in about 15 minutes' time. We anticipate a whole lot of results rolling in from Wisconsin where we understand there could be a record turnout of voters today, and that is what you will see across the bottom of the screen once we have results to report to you. Other things we need to report to you, specifically some troubling news out of North Korea. As earlier today, officials in South Korea said they believe North Korea can, in fact, mount a nuclear warhead on a medium-range missile. The Rodong missile would put all of South Korea, most of Japan, and conceivably parts of Russia and China in range. That's what the South Koreans are saying. But North Korea, through propaganda, is claiming, hey, they've already lined up sites in Washington, D.C. Propaganda, or should it concern us? That's a topic worthy of our panel. First, right here beside me at the anchor desk, the former head of the House Intelligence Committee, Mr. Chairman Pete Hoekstra of Michigan, joining us from Newsmax, Washington. Another good friend who served with us on Capitol Hill, former Congressman Michael Patrick Flanagan, and likewise from Newsmax, Washington, retired U.S. Army Colonel Patrick Murray, whose duty assignments included Iraq, Russia, and the United Nations. As we continue along, Colonel, let me ask you about what's going on in Korea. How much weight do you put in the observations of the South Koreans and the boasts of the communist regime from the North? Well, J.D., they are right there at ground zero. So I think you have to take it seriously, although the North Koreans are known for their bluster. Nevertheless, we know they have nuclear weapons. We know they're trying to marry them on to a, uh, to a missile that they can launch it with. That's why we need to escalate uh, our efforts to get in some high-range air defense systems in South Korea that can that can thwart that, because otherwise it's, it's going to be problematic, and, uh, and I don't trust... Kim Jong-un, who, as I've said before, is a millennial with nukes. And not only that, Pete Hoekstra, other reports coming in that uh, our eyes in the sky have seen renewed activity. Uh, the North Koreans apparently trying to process more plutonium. Mm -hmm. So, what, you know, I, you take a look at, the, at the, uh, the adolescent with nukes, and people look at him and he's pudgy and he's got a goofy haircut, but that's precisely the kind of guy you have to worry about. Uh, absolutely. And I think the most 
concerning thing about what North Korea is doing is the proliferation. If they've developed the capability to miniaturize it, put it onto a missile, it means that Iran now will have that capability relatively quickly, uh, which then means the Middle East and Europe are now within range. And uh, Pete, you mentioned uh, basically a new axis between Pyongyang and Tehran. The North Koreans and the Iranians have been working together for some time. Michael Patrick Flanagan, the policy issues are tough enough, but translate it to us politically. Do you expect now, with what is happening in the news, that the presidential candidates will turn their attention to foreign policy and national security? I hope so. If, not, if for no other reason than to show up how this administration seems to be indifferent to it. Strategic nukes for us are stuff that can cross a whole ocean and land in the United States, and we live kind of, well, there aren't many countries that can do that. Strategic for South Korea is what we call tactical. A whole bunch of people can reach them, and they have their really belligerent neighbors to the north ready to wipe them off the map. Japan or any of the other solid countries in there that have been our friends for years should give us great pause and great worry. This administration doesn't seem to care as long as it doesn't show up in the polls or show up in his legacy. He's good to go. Well, gentlemen, President Obama does appear to discuss these things through the prism of politics. Earlier today, he discussed the immigration policy of both Ted Cruz and Donald Trump. And our current commander in chief says it's a serious problem. Listen, we've got serious problems here. We've got big issues around the world. People expect the President of the United States and the elected officials in this country to treat these problems seriously. They don't expect half-baked notions coming out of uh, the White House. Uh, we can't afford that. Half-baked policy is the way the President discussed it. We edited it, but as I understand it, in the uh, White House press room, uh, th there was sympathetic chuckling, which shows uh, just how objective the White House journalists are. Gentlemen, when we come back, we're going to talk more about the proclivities of our current commander in chief, why everything first, last and always is political, even when it comes to something as sensitive as national security. We will remind you that in about 10 minutes time, the polls will close in Wisconsin. The votes will be coming in, and our coverage will continue here on Newsmax TV. At the top of the hour, our good friend Dennis Michael Lynch takes over with his unfiltered point of view from Newsmax New York. But for now, we will continue with our panel on national security and, yes, politics, as America Votes 2016 continues. Welcome back. We heard this before the break, but it bears repetition. President Obama this afternoon in the White House press briefing room. We've got serious problems here. We've got big issues around the world. People expect the President of the United States and the elected officials in this country to treat these problems seriously. They don't expect half-baked notions coming out of uh, the White House. Uh, we can't afford that. Uh, one is tempted to say, gee, the half-baked notions may come from the current commander-in-chief. At any rate, alongside my good friend, former Congressman Pete Hoekstra, former chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, also at Newsmax Washington, another Capitol Hill colleague, Michael Patrick Flanagan, the gentleman who served Illinois so capably, and also at Newsmax Washington, retired U.S. Army Colonel Patrick Murray. Uh, you hear this president, Pete. And he just cannot resist the political bug, even when there are vexing world problems. Exactly. He, I mean, he takes the shot, takes the shot at, uh, at Donald Trump today in saying half-baked ideas. And my reaction when I heard it was half-baked ideas. Let's see. Iran, Yemen, Egypt, Libya, ISIS, Syria, Iraq. Um, and the bottom line on all this is we're taking foreign policy to a place where it shouldn't go. It should be a serious discussion by both parties and a consistent policy that the American people and our allies can depend on. Uh, and, uh, and, of course, uh, it was a senator from your state, Arthur Vandenberg, right. who yeah. actually said uh, partisanship stops at the water's edge. Michael Patrick Flanagan, as the resident Chicagoan on this uh, panel, I guess this doesn't surprise you. This is vintage Barack Obama. It, it is what it is. I mean, you can't count on the guy for a straight answer for anything. 
And if he shades it, he's going to shade it in such a way as to envelop his own superiority. Look at the way he said that. We got, we got a bunch of problems here. That's, that's not even proper English. It, the whole idea is to show how obvious and how folksy and how, how, how just plain this is and how we can all get it. If he really was that concerned about the ideas, why don't you give us a position paper on it? Tell us what's wrong in North Korea. Tell us how you're going to fix it. And tell us, instead of just saying, ah, they're all wrong once again, yuck, yuck, yuck. That's pretty much what you got from him, but that's what we've had from him for seven years. It's an international embarrassment. We need to move on. A couple of minutes remain, really, less than two minutes. Colonel Murray, uh, I just am interested in your perspective on this because members of the military salute and follow orders. How tough is it for your former colleagues to hear these political prattlings from our current commander in chief? Well, I can't believe I actually saw something that I agreed with the president about this president. We do have serious problems and people don't expect half-baked ideas out of the White House. But as Pete pointed out on one issue after another, that's all we've received because the Obama doctrine is leading from behind. It's hashtag diplomacy out of the State Department. And, and that's what we're getting. And that's why the world is, is markedly less safe. My colleagues, you ask about us, we believe in supporting and defending the Constitution, J.D. We believe in providing for the common defense. And I think this president is on a completely different planet when it comes to what he sees the response of the federal government is. One can almost see a, a test question in all of this. Compare and contrast our current commander-in-chief with the nation's first commander-in-chief, General George Washington, who famously said, we must see the world as it is, not merely as we wish it to be. Pete Hoekster right here on the anchor desk, Michael Patrick Flanagan and Colonel Patrick Murray tonight from Newsmax Washington. Gentlemen, you have our thanks. It is worth noting that the polls are just about to close in Madison, Wisconsin. And our coverage of the Wisconsin primary continues next here as uh, Dennis Michael Lynch will be here with his program Unfiltered. I'll be back to join him for a few minutes as well. Then later tonight, our good friend Ed Berliner will be on the anchor desk as we monitor what takes place in Wisconsin. Will there be surprises with the open primary on the Republican side? It is worth noting, you see at the bottom of the screen where the tallies will be passed along to you. And uh, we very much appreciate your time tonight. Back tomorrow night with Newsmax Prime at 8 o'clock Eastern. For now, stay brave, stay free, stay tuned.